Okay, I finished. I just finished reading. I like this. I like this particular author. His name is Walter Mosley, right? Mm-hmm. And um, he's got a book. This is the book I just finished reading. It's called uh, "Down the River Unto the Sea." Now he's a very accomplished writer, um, and uh, I haven't read. I haven't read him in a while. You know, I've been doing doing a lot of how do we say it? nonfiction reading lately. Okay. But eh, got to take a break. When I want to take a break, I go to fiction. But the way they do fiction these days, they always have something there that's current or something, you know, because they have to do okay. their research, you know. But um, so this is a really great writer, Walter Mosley. I, I interviewed him a long time ago, too, you know. But here's this thing. Uh, Walter Mosley is one of the America's most celebrated and beloved and beloved uh, writers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, a grand master of mystery writers of America. Okay, and they go into all the accolades with, you know, all these organs of pen mm-hmm. and all the rest of this stuff, right? Then he says that, you know, his 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 short or rather, they said his books have been translated into more than twenty languages. Whoa. You know? His short fiction has appeared in, in a wide array of publications, you know, all the New York and GQ, the, the regular stuff, right? Right. And uh, um um he is he's the author of the acclaimed Easy Rollins series. That was there, there uh, including uh, including most recently Charcoal Joe. He lives in New York City. So now I, I started reading him long when he first started writing, I guess, or was publishing, I should say, uh, because he had, to, again, they have this um, series here. I see Charcoal Joe is right there. there I, his first book was The Devil in a Blue Dress. They made that into a movie with uh, Denzel and Don Cheadle. Um, uh, Red Death, Red Death, White Butterfly, Black Betty. So around about then, that's when I started, that's when I interviewed him. But I read all the stuff up to, uh, I think, uh, Gone Fishing, Dead Boy Brown, he's Six Easy Pieces, um, a little, I don't think I read The Cinnamon Kiss. So I guess, uh, whatever. But then he has these other books, these other things that he that he's done. So I, I read some of his other stuff. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Gone Fishing. Was that put into a movie? That was a movie, but it wasn't his story. That was that was another. That it was, was a not, com- no, that was a comedy. That was uh, that was Danny Glover and uh, and Joe Pesci. Okay, I think that was Joe Pesci. One of those okay. people like that. But here's what I do now. What I do? See, I used to when I started reading a long time ago. I have such a reverence. I would never mark up a book. I mean, never. Only recently, I guess in the last five years, I started. I made. I wouldn't even dog ear a book. You know, you have to give me. I would use, you know, a bookmark. Mm-hmm. In fact, now this day and age, this is interesting too because now people don't really do books. You know, not everybody reads, but um, but now when I do books, I don't really like ordering for things like Amazon stuff like that. I like bookstores. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, right here in Norfolk, there is a book called Prince Books. That's where I bought this book from. Mm-hmm. Right, and they say in Prince Book, um, here's what you oh here here's what you just did. This is interesting. I'm glad they. Here's what you just did, and I got ten things that you just did by buying this book. One, you kept dollars in our economy. Okay. Talk about the local economy. You didn't say because if you send it to animals, there are people take that. They take your money, put it overseas, and get just get rich and stuff like that. You, know? you embrace what makes us unique, meaning store and, uh, and whatever. You created local jobs. Okay. You got you got bookstores, you got people here. Yeah, come there you go. All right. You helped the environment because you didn't use all this, you know, shipping things from plane flying, whatever. Okay. Uh you uh you nurtured community. You create community because bookstores also have they have readings and stuff like that. People come to readings, right? Because now in the COVID, you know, that's sort of not happening. You conserved uh your tax dollar. Mm. You created more choice. See, because if you go to an airport, but they have the same books, everybody has the same stuff because of mass marketing and stuff like that. They push the same thing on you. Um, you took advantage of our expertise. Now, this is important mm. because when you go to the book, a real bookstore, you ask the person, well, I sort of like that. And they know the books. They're readers also. Even, and when you get an answer from them or suggestion from them, 
you know, it's been true and tried. And if you have a relationship with that bookstore, they know what you're doing. They can say, you know, this, this, I, I see you've been reading a lot of Walter Mosley. Well, maybe, you, you know, back then we have a thing called uh, Chester Himes book just came in. You should be reading some Chester Himes, that kind of thing. You know, you might like Chester mm-hmm. Himes. Or you've been reading Walter Mosley. Oh, you, 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 you might like Nero Wolf books, you know, because it's those kind of things, you know, mysteries. Okay. Uh, you invested in entrepreneurship. Because a lot of, because mm. especially in a small bookstore, they can carry local things and, you know, people are self published and stuff like that. Okay. Number 10, the last one. You made us your destination. Oh, That's literary right there. That is beautiful. That's literary Look right there. Look. Ended. Uh-huh. Now, I just want to say, see, I've been so I've been reading this book, right, and and um, and some things come across, and uh, either it's a word or a phrase. But I said, what's that? So I, I did some marking here. But they have a glossary there. No, I didn't have no glossary in this book. I, there's a new uh, book. Uh, the one of my favorite writers, uh, named Henry Dumas. They have a new book out with him, and. Uh, they have a glossary because he did a lot of Southern writing for Southern people. So they had to put words in there that you, because mm-hmm. <laughs> nobody yeah. knows. So I have to say for in this book on three page three, this, this book is only 322 pages long, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to go backwards. They have this word. Uh, it looked like paternally. Uh, it looks pernaturally. See that? I don't know if you can see that word right there. I don't know that word. I've never seen that word. Mm. You know, P like a compound P, word put together, uh, doesn't it? P R E T E R, N A T U R A L L Y, right? Pre not Peternaturally. I don't know, so I have to look it up. I have to look okay. that word. A new word. Oh, I like That's the word. word. I might use that word. So, and then you might have like maybe go to some. Uh, I did some other marking here. I just want to go some of the marks so you understand what happened, why, why books turned me on. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Right? Oh, here's, listen to this. Um, uh, this guy, he, his, 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 the protagonist, he talks about his uh, grandmother. It says, um, it says, my one-time sharecropper grandmother. So, you know, automatically it comes from a lineage, you know, of black lineage, you know, American Negro, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. call it ADOS these days, lineage because his mother was sharecropper. So this, this the protagonist here obviously is black. <laughs> well, maybe not obviously because you know, but we're talking black. We're talking here. So I can relate to that, you know. Uh, so we keep on going. Let me get to another. Oh, what's to say down here? Mm. Oh, his. Then they, then there's words that they use. Sometimes somebody uses a word. I said, how appropriate. There's the word. This guy has a relationship with this other guy. Relationship, I mean, like, he's just, not psychic, but he's, he, um, uh, I have to read the book, but uh, basically he's his, his, he's his uh, henchman. He's like a, his, his muscle, right? So, oh, okay. So the guy, the guy says, me, uh, uh, oh, has to have met, the guy's name is Mel. He says, Mel? I said when he answered the phone, and Mel says, my liege. My liege. Now, my liege, you know that word. Meaning, my, hello. My liege. Like, um, he, he's his boss. So, uh-huh. liege, you know, you know this word. L-I-E-G-E. Liege. That's one of those medieval words. You know? Uh-huh. My liege. You know, you had a you had a knight, and then they have a whatever. And then there's his second H-E- one. H is that L I? L yes, L I. L I E G E. Yeah, liege, my liege. I know that word, but it's a, it's a great word to use at that particular point. You only use it once. I like that word. My it's like saying my boss, my my commander. Okay. Basically, it mainly is more like my commander. It's like a more like a military term. Okay. So like I will appreciate something like that, um, and then uh, I got this whole thing here. Uh, uh, let me. I don't want to read that part. Let me just. Let me not read that. Let me find another one. So that's what I do. I uh, when I find something in the book, I just make a note of it, and I might go back later or might look at it right away. Um. Um. Here's a really interesting. Then it has little stories in there about this guy. You know. Um. Uh. Uh. 
these just little stories that, that turn you on, you know? I won't read that either. Let me, I'm going to try to find something really interesting because there was one uh, passage that really struck me. Uh, let's see. So this, is, this, this sounds little sentences like this. Her eyes were gray and I knew mine were brown. That means nothing to anybody, but it's such a beautiful sentence in the context of what's, go what's going on. And just because he's described people all around, but this is the first time he said, "Her eyes were gray, and I knew mine were brown." There's something else happening in that simple sentence, you know. Yeah. So those kind of things. I, that's what I appreciate by, about good writing. That's what I'm trying to say. Walter Mosley is a great writer, you know. Um, oh, here there was an abscess. A, B, S, C, E, S, S, an abscess, right? Mm -hmm. Of evil out in the world. And for some reason, that was my responsibility, if not my fault. My what? There was, not, there was an abscess of evil out in the world. And for some reason, that was my responsibility, if not my fault. Okay. A free man was on death row. No cop, judge, or average Joe was going to put up their hands and say, I have doubts. Of course, he killed two cops. This is a modern okay. kind of thing. But I'm saying, the way the way he enters that that thought, it's just, to me, it's just uh, magnificent, you know? Is uh, that author uh, usually use that styling in his books, descriptive way of yeah, just the way, just the way he introducing is. Concepts and experiences. That's what it is. He's more to people. Okay. It's not, you know how the academics use big words and then get a few mm -hmm. together. But this is different. Huh? Here, I learned a lot since I was a police detective thinking he could do it on his own, I said. I learned that reading is important, that law is an ever-changing variable equation, and that a man is a fool if he works alone. That's simple thought. We'll say, oh, I see. I shouldn't be working in big groups. That's a but multitude of suggestions. In a simple, in a simple communicative sentence, you know. Um, um, <laughs> here's a saying. I would. Um, it says your position. Uh, uh, in your position, ignorance is better than the apple. The apple. Yeah. In your position, ignorance is better than the apple. Okay. It sounds profound. It just, I don't know what it means, man. <laughs> He's always describing people really interesting. I'll leave that one another one. Uh, do that one. I'm trying to find this. There's this one patch. Of, uh, to me, it was so beautiful. Right? Here, this is, this is interesting. He was describing somebody he was somewhere between the ages of 36 and 16 and smelled of rose utter. He was somewhere mm. between the age of 36 and 16. Think about that. It sort of twists your brain. Oh, what, is, what does he mean by that? And he can smell the, the, the rose utter. Uh, oh. At, atar, I should say. Um, That's where memories serve, mm -hmm. serve a good part. And then, you know, there's words, you know, but then he's like, for instance, this word here. Um, when the gunsel was gone, G-U-N-S-E-L. I know what that means, but the gunsel is a very interesting word. People don't use that then, right? Kung Fu. No, <laughs> it just means gun. See, gunsel. Oh, I see gun. Okay. Gunsel. But gunsel is like a, a, a person that uses a gun, like, you know, like that. But now, the soon as... word was gun. And you know that yeah, helps you to yeah. remember that word. But here's the thing. I read that word and like not, maybe that night, I was on the internet, and somebody had sent to say something, they was talking about this movie, came out uh, called uh, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were writing in the comments, yeah, they write in the comments. They, they, they said something that was not true. They said that, it's, uh, because um, it was about this guy, um, I don't know if you, uh, um, um, was, was it, he was only a Black Panther for like a year. He was, he was really an, I call him a community organizer. You know, and that's what this movie's about. Not about him, but it's about the, the guy that snitched him out to the FBI, mm -hmm. and then they they, 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 they they killed him, you know? Okay. Um, but anyway, the thing about it 
And they were saying that he brought, uh, that one of the groups that he was bringing together was a group called the Young Lords. And the guy in the comments said the Young Lord was a, was a gang, right? Mm -hmm. Like a regular gang or whatever it is, right? But that's not true. Young Lords was started as a political entity. They, was, they fashioned themselves after the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. So I used the word, I said, I said, no, the gang means that you have guns. I said, no, they were, they were always a particular, they, they were never gunsels. I used that word in that comment, you see? So I'm just trying to say, so when the words come to you, first of all, you know, you know this, you, you use them right, you, you, you use them right away, you know, otherwise you might lose them, you know? So I always remember that because I, I use that word to comment on, on the, um, on this guy's miscop, this this misinformation. Let's put it that way. I mean, I find that I do I do some commenting on the internet, but I never do cheap shots. I never call people out of their their names or you know stuff like that. I always try. I guess you would call it take the high road. But I use I use my regular language. But I mean, I usually use language that they know if they try to answer me. First of all, you know they're saying, "Whoa, wait a second. This might be an intelligent guy here. Yeah. I don't think I want to wrestle with an intelligent guy. This this forum really is for uh, you know <laughs> to vent, to 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 do things. I'm trying to find this beautiful passage that I that I know I highlighted. I know it wasn't too early in the book. Somewhere in here. So, right, so this is what I do. I mean, so what I usually do, actually I'm I'm, I'm when I go, I got uh, uh my next book is a nonfiction book. But same author? No, no, different author. Okay. He has nonfiction books. I mean that that he uh, that he's written, but uh, but I mean I use him because I won't say it's easy reading, but it's 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 reading that you can appreciate, but not too. It's not too. How to say it? Uh, it's not too too low, <laughs> okay. but it's not too high. I don't know how to say that. Right, you know, it's not low brow, but it's not high brow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's j for, I let me put it for my taste, it's just right. Just right. <laughs> okay, I can't find this passage I'm looking for because it was really a I should have bookmarked it. Uh, I read that one already, so I can't find the one, but th that's what I do. You know, I look at these things and and I, I try to find I find joy. Let me put it this way I find joy. And I guess you would call it a tactile reading, and, you okay. know, to be able to touch the book, you know, you know, to be able to. And you're at liberty to speed, to, to read and enjoy at mm -hmm. your exactly. time. In fact, you know the next book I'm going to read? Oh, here's the next book I'm uh -oh. reading. You got it ready? But I'm going to read only because I'm going to New York, you know, so I'm on this, you know, I start on the train. This is my next book. You ready for this? Yeah. Well, goodness, Malcolm X, the, the, the life of Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. But it's a new one by a really good journalist who I really love this guy, uh, Les Payne, wonderful journalist. He passed already, but he, his, his, his uh, uh, daughter, Tamara, he, well, Les Payne died a few years ago. He passed on. But Tamara, Tamara uh, Payne is his daughter. So she finished the book. He had right, researched for a long she time. She finished it. For, for, yeah. But here's the thing. Well, let me ask you. Do you did, you know, with, uh, with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Well, what were your, what's your recollections of, of, of that era? Of, uh, you know, I think got pictures and everything of, uh, of Malcolm and uh, and Marcus Garvey, W. E. B. Du Bois. You know all these people. Uh, I know uh, Du Bois. Uh, Elijah Muhammad. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know who Rosie Glover is, but Rosie Glover. Rosa Parks. No, Rosie Rosie Glover. Now they don't have Rosa Parks in here. Really great pictures of Malcolm X. Um, well, what what's your record? Like? What 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 were you doing when they were when Malcolm X was happening? What, 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 what were the people saying around your in your group in your grouping? What were they saying? Some people mm -hmm. were thinking that he was like a uh, Martin Luther. He, they put him on the same page and everything of a authority mm -hmm. recommendations and everything, just like they were looking at say Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Rosa Parks, or 
any of those folk mm -mm -mm. that were popular. I thought that they were just popular. Mm -mm. And I thought they were lining themselves for Malcolm X in the same way that I would in, admired what, say, Rosa Parks was saying mm -hmm. or showing mm -hmm. or what Martin Luther King was trying to show. Mm -hmm. And because Martin Luther King, in my eyes, was being introduced in two folds, and a, a minister mm -hmm. and a person who was trying to teach you that you can get an idea across without having to fight, mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. having to use profanity, mm -hmm. without having to do with those things that I guess I grew up in the house mm -hmm. seeing and hearing. Mm -hmm. And so when they talk about Malcolm X, he was more or less, in my eyes, just to be what they call a radical person. Mm -hmm. And if you, if your parents said it was okay mm -hmm. to align yourself with a radical person, that's what the kids start saying. Mm -hmm. There's nobody like Malcolm X. And they say that to me. Are you going to hear him? I said, I can't go. They said, why? I said, I just can't just go get on a bus and go somewhere where I don't know. They said, well, you can go and you I said, but I hadn't talked this over with my mother and daddy. Mm -hmm. Well, your mother's there. I said, but no. In my house, they will tell you, we say it's okay. Mm -hmm. And let me give you something for bus fare. Well, it's sort of, isn't it different? Because remember, you're in the South. I mean, you're still in Virginia, still South, I mean, South of Washington, well, South of Baltimore, whatever. But the point, Malcolm X was known for as a Northern kind of movement. And then, and because Southern Christian Leadership Conference was more, more as a Southern movement. Uh -huh. I mean, you're not far from North Carolina here. So the, the point, well, the point really is, um, uh, um, you're, you're going to be, ex you're, your people are going to look at it differently because you have to, you know, because Malcolm X has had the Muslim backing as a religious thing. You the, Down here, they have the, the Christian backing as, as, as a thing. So basically, Malcolm was still a minister, if you want to put that, even though he'd have a degree from the uh, 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 seminary or something like that. But he ministered. He was, well, he's a spokesman. But the point is, it's the two different realities. Some people can straddle both realities, but most people were in either camp. Yes, mm -hmm. that's, that's the whole thing. I, was just I wondering. think the, the, the uh, Southern Leadership Conference may have invited him uh, to where this was being held as a special mm. person, you know, and everybody was trying their best to have the experience of being in an environment with Malcolm X. Mm. This was in Norfolk? Uh-huh. Mm. Mm. And when I did mention to daddy and to mother that I wanted to go, daddy said, uh, how long will he be here? So I said, I don't know that. He said, if he's going to be here long enough that we can go, to, to, I can take you. Mm. I said, I don't know, but I'll find out. I said, my boy, if he's going to stay here long enough so my daddy can go, my daddy can take me. And he'll let me enjoy, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to hear this Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. Well, when I found out that the Malcolm X was going to be there for only another day, mm -hmm. this is the night, the big night, I guess they call it the big night, where everybody was going to be there. All the Southern leadership folks were going to be there. Or I could imagine them on the platform. Mm -hmm. And when Malcolm X would get up to stand, I could imagine... Everybody said, this is the reason we stood in line to get in here. And I got the best seat in the house because mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X was a disappointment to me mm -hmm. because I had not attended any of his programs or mm -hmm. been to his church or been anywhere. I knew he was a name mm -hmm. and I knew what the, the kids were saying. Mm -hmm that they were proud of him because he was a radical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I sat there wondering why or what is he going to say next that would make him a radical? Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything that would make him a radical. 
other than all they was talking about, we got to be at work together and play together and preach together. And he had one of those, if you wanted to say, hallelujah, amen, mm-hmm. things. Because somebody would say, amen, brother, you talking the right stuff. Mm-hmm. Or somebody would clap their hands and say, mm, talk some more. <laughs> and they wanted to and said, talk some more. Malcolm X would talk some more. And I said, well, when he, I said, he's style as a preacher too. I said, oh, he's going to start preaching in a minute. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he's a, not, what he was saying, that was his sermon. Mm-hmm. I said, you mean he tell me you could have a sermon and it won't be in church? Or, or somebody yelling at you. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, it was loud too. And I said, Whoa, why did I have to talk so loud? Mm. I said, You hurt my ears. Mm. And and uh, somebody said to me, Honey, he's quiet night. <laughs> they heard me say to Daddy, Daddy, why is it so loud? Mm-hmm. And the lady said, I know you're not talking to me. But he's quiet tonight, honey. You should have been here the other night. I said, I didn't even say thank you out loud. I said, Daddy said to me, mm-hmm. listen, you learn. So so did you talk about the speech or the, the experience afterwards with your family or anybody? Mm, I told I told my brother when next to me, mm-hmm. I said, if you had planned to go here at Malcolm X, he said, you mean the radical? I said, no, I don't want you to ever utter that as identity to him. You can call it his name, but you can't call him a radical because you don't know whether he's a radical or not. Is this what somebody has given him that title, mm-hmm. the name, or is it because he is really what you call a radical? Daddy said, one way to find that out, told my brother, is to get the dictionary. Mm. Look up the word radical. And look at the word Mm. prophet. Mm. Look up the word teacher. Mm. And something else he told him. My brother said, I got to look at all those words. He said, if you want to understand who the man is you're calling, quote, radical. You want to know what the other ways that people may describe him. Mm. So daddy said, no, my brother said, well, when do I have to do that? He said, have you done your homework? He said, no, sir, I haven't finished. He said, "Mm -hmm. how long did it take you to finish your homework? He said, well, I don't have to do that. I can do that tomorrow. He said, no, you won't do it. You won't do your homework tomorrow. You're going to do your homework tonight. He said, how am I going to look up, look up radical? He said, you do radical after you do your homework. <laughs> he said, in that order. My brother sat at the table, finished eating. I said to say, why did I say anything about radical? I got to do extra homework. He saw that as being mm. extra homework. He said, does she have, to, does sister have to do it? He said, no, she knows what radical is. You mean you've been in all those words already? I said, all of them. Mm -hmm. And he said, how do you feel about that? Daddy said to me, how do you feel about that word? I said, which word? He said, radical. I said, I think that word does not fit him, Mm -hmm. even though some people may call him that. No, I said, people call him that. And my dad said, all the people, mm. or are you talking about some people? I said, more like some. He said, when you make a statement like that, that you can't say all, oh, because that's everybody, including mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. He said, so be a little more specific in that. He said, some of, I think some of the people, mm-hmm. and make it a personal thing, because what you feel and say may not be speaking to the ma- by the masses of people. Mm-hmm. You may be talking about a small segment like you and your friend. Mm-hmm. And that's all. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't hear Malcolm X name calling the house anymore about going to hear him. So my brother said, well, he's leaving anyway, isn't he? I said, yes. Well, now we can go we can go out and do things like that. I said, but not talk about that. He said, I said, let it die. Mm. Let the conversation mm. die because if you keep it alive like this, it's going to become a part of your daily conversation with your little friends. Mm. And when you go to school, if you see that word, you're going to think, I've seen the real radical. Mm. I said, you know what? A terminology like that to tell what a person is. The same way you would not want anybody saying something about you saying a word and then put you as an example. Uh, and it's negative too. Mm. And he looked at me, he said, do I have to look that up, Daddy? <laughs> Daddy said, what? <laughs> negative. <laughs> Daddy said, if you don't understand it. Look it up. No, with a dictionary. Mm. You didn't have a one dictionary in the house. It was a, a Funk Wagner. Mm. Funk and Wagner, yeah. Mm. That so was, that was good, good dictionary. We had that one. I said, mm. they had to do everything you wanted. Mm. If you wanted to find out what a word meant, fella, guess up. Asked Daddy, could it be excusing the table? He said, sure. And he went, I, I guess Dad thought he was going to the bathroom or something. He came back with the dictionary. Mm. Now we're going to have to look up that. Mm. Daddy said, couldn't you just wait until we finish our meal? Fella said, yes, we could. But, but Daddy, may I just look that up? This is so important. I don't want to forget it. So daddy said, you're excused. He got down on the floor on his stomach. Mm -hmm. Turned the page till he found the word he was looking for. He said, oh. Hmm. Oh. Because <laughs> in, in that dictionary, they give you the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. Then they tell you another spelling and a pronunciation. They gave you the definition, and they would always give a sentence using mm. that word. Mm. And so he came back to the table. He said, thanks, Daddy, for letting me look. But I don't think I want to use that word anymore. He said, why? He said, because there's some things in there. And they were using examples that we aren't allowed to say. Because this makes it as if the person... It's not a good person that the person is bad or they don't have anybody to love them. Fellow went through a dissertation on why he didn't want to do that anymore. So when he finished, Daddy said, you did good research. Mm. Now was, we don't have to worry about that. Was that the word negative or the word radical? What, what word was he talking about? A negative. negative. It started yeah. from negative. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you.